peace of mind. Who does not want to achieve that? Yet the truth is, even if you're one of the ultimate gurus, you're going to realize that it's just not possible nor even desirable. But knowing that may actually be the key to achieving a very close proximity. I'm Barry Kibrick. That's what we'll explore in just a moment. Between the Lines with Barry Kibrick is made possible in part by Patreon. Patreon helps creators build and run membership businesses, from podcasters to writers, musicians, artists, and more, with tools that allow their fans to become patrons. More information is available at patreon.com. And Between the Lines with Barry Kubrick is also made possible by the following contributors. A complete list of funders is available at barrykubrick.com. Peace of mind. Ah, take a deep breath and see if you can feel it for just a moment. Because that's all you're going to get. I began researching this when I was looking over some old shows and I had the privilege of having the great coach John Wooden on one of my episodes. And I want to read you his definition of success. Success is peace of mind, which is a direct result of self-satisfaction in knowing you did your best to become the best you are capable of being. I began to think and ponder that because I am such a devout fan of John Wooden and his philosophy, and yet something was gnawing at me. And it was two elements of that quote. One was, I personally never experience peace of mind. I don't feel sorry for me because I don't think you do either. And as I hinted at the beginning, it may not even be desirable. The second part of that quote was doing the best that I could do. I could never really be certain of that either. No matter how hard I work, and I'll even admit that I'm, I'm kind of a hard-working guy. There's no doubt about it. I'm not ashamed to say it. And yet at the same time, am I always doing the best that I can do? Those two things kept conflicting in my mind. One was the peace of mind, and the other, am I doing the best that I can do? So I thought today with you by my side, we'll begin to explore that concept of peace of mind, why the best way to achieve it may not be the way we originally thought. I want to read this. The only peace of mind is knowing that you can never really have it, and more important, you don't really want it. And I reflect back on the old Rolling Stones song. You don't always get what you want, but you get what you need. Now, peace of mind is a want. That's what we crave. But I'm telling you, the journey to a peace of mind is what you need. The journey of peace of mind is what you need, not the peace of mind, because it cannot be achieved. And recently, I had the privilege of actually having dinner with a group of three yogis, <laughs> not like Yogi Bear or anything like that, but these were really deep meditative gurus from India, and they we were talking about what I was going to discuss on the show. And I said to them, and I, and I was so hesitant because I figured 
my gosh, these guys are going to really get me. I said, I'm going to level with you guys. I know you search for peace of mind, but my show's going to be dedicated to never being able to achieve it. And that's when they all nodded, absolutely. You can never achieve peace of mind. And they actually began to tell me stories of people approaching the, the great gurus and asking them, how do you achieve peace of mind? And this one great guru who is in his 90s said, I don't know, come back in 90 years, maybe then you'll figure it out. Because we can't. But yet, there is something in our society that almost makes us feel cheated if we don't achieve it. I cannot begin to tell you how many self-help books we've had on this show, how many supposed gurus of finding peace within we've had on this show. And yet, I'm going to also tell you that I think that notion causes more of our problems than it does help us. Because if we're constantly thinking that we're missing out on something because we can't quiet our mind properly, what does it do? It causes us greater anxiety that we're failing to be the best that we can be. I go back to John Wooden on that one. We cannot live in that continuous spiraling cycle of feeling that we're not living in the now, that we're not living up to our full potential, that we are not, 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 not. Yet that's what we are being driven by, these constant thoughts. I mean, uh, Super Soul Sunday, I, I check that out on the Oprah channel. And when I'm done, I'm sometimes going, my gosh, one more thing that I'm not able to achieve or accomplish. I've had enough. So when I really think and spoke even to these yogis and found out that peace of mind is not really achievable, for some reason, I felt more peaceful. Now, I want to share something with you that I wrote down. And I wrote it down, so I don't know why I have to read it, but it's because I won't remember it. <laughs> That's the truth. That's why I write them down. Rarely can anyone create more emotional self-doubt and feelings of failure in our life than we can. Now, there is no doubt in my mind that we are our own worst enemies. The question, though, is how do we turn that around? How do we not become our own worst enemies? Well, again, maybe that's not something that's possible. Maybe, again, it's only in the knowledge and wisdom of knowing that that we can sort of relieve ourselves of the burden of guilt. Another thing that I wanted to share with you, I don't know how to do this but something inside me does. One of the key ways of achieving any sense of stability is to stop even using your mind. You've got to listen to the mind of your body. Your body's cells are so much more primitive than the cells that compro comprise up your frontal lobe. They are the, the cells that were from the Big Bang. They're the cells that came out of the ocean when we first hit the land as, as some sort of sea creature turning into what might have been some sort of mankind hominid. But the frontal lobe, the one that causes us to keep thinking, is the one that causes us the most trouble. And here's something very interesting. They're finding out now for the first time that the actual cellular structure of the gut is much more closely resembling that of the brain. In fact, according to the most recent research and scientific evidence, it's almost identical to the makeup of the brain. So 
it's not just an old wives' tale when they say you feel it in your gut. That is where we need to start concentrating, in our gut. Get out of our head, get into our gut. Now, by doing that, you actually create an inner ally. Because I often, and I'll bring this up in, a, in another episode about mentoring, I, I find sometimes, yes, there, there can be nothing greater if you have a mentor, but oftentimes you really have to mentor yourself. And oftentimes, no matter how much love you may have experienced, no matter how close of a friend you might have, the true ally that you need to return to is the one within. But if your head is constantly telling you that it's not a good ally because you can't find the peace that you believe you are destined to find, you're almost attacking yourself. This is the thing we must stop doing. Now, I want to share another thought with you. That is this. You are already relevant. You already are. You are born relevant and you live a life of relevance rather you pay attention to this or not. So no matter what I say, no matter if this makes you feel good or it makes you feel bad, it won't really matter because the truth is you are relevant and that's what you have to be aware of. If you want any closeness to peace, it is to realize your worth. Your worth no matter what you do. In our society, we, we seem to praise only those, unfortunately, that have some sort of financial success. We sometimes let others get in there. We, we will praise teachers for their ability to reach children and touch lives. We'll praise doctors who may not even be rich but who help people. There's no doubt about it. But we've got to begin to feel good about ourselves no matter what we do because you never know the real effect you have and the peace you may not find in yourself, but the peace you're giving to others. I've recently been doing some videos for the school district that I work for, and one of the key things that they're talking about is what's known as the student voice and its aspirations. And one of the key things they're realizing is that trauma plays a large part on many of our young people's lives. We don't realize this, but especially in the cities, many of our young children are experiencing trauma on a daily basis. And part of this program that I'm working with, and it's with UCLA and the Semmel Institute, uh, is to be able to notice that that trauma oftentimes acts out. But if you can tap in to that person, really empathize with what they're going through, give them the peace of mind, that's when you can start feeling it yourself. I can't tell you how many of the psychologists and psychiatrists that I had to interview said that the greatest thing they felt when they felt the best they could feel was one that they gave that student just a little respite from their trauma. So again, maybe even though your inner ally is the one you have to sort of really tap into, it's what you're going to do outside of your thoughts your actions, how you're going to relate to others, how you're going to empathize with your fellow humans, that's going to be the way. It's not by going inward. I, I'll never forget, in fact, my crew was here when we had uh, Dr. Deepak Chopra on, a wonderful man who does his best to share his wisdom with, with the world. And I'll never forget him telling me that 
he was meditating for four hours a day. And I said, that, said it as a joke, but now I, I mean it sincerely. I said, Doc, I think that's three hours and 45 minutes too much. And when I told this story to these uh, other uh, guests I told you about who I had dinner with, who were actual yogis and gurus from India, they also thought it was very funny and they were, were friends with Dr. Chopra and also realized that, you know, even meditation, as much as that's supposed to give you peace of mind, it really only does so during the time you meditate. I can't help but I've tried it enough times, at least for myself, to know that the minute I'm done, I'm back in my head doing the dance I don't want to dance with. So, you know, it may come down to that inner dialogue, but um, I'm hoping it doesn't. However, there is something I do want to share with you that I also believe will get us closer. Remember, it's only that journey that we're concerned with. If you've got nothing but a sense of humor, you will survive. Now, I can't tell you how important that is. A sense of humor, even when we're talking about serious topics like peace of mind, it has to be there because it's through a sense of humor that you can laugh at the absurdity of even trying to do the best you can. By the way, I, I want to give John so much credit. I, I, I'm playing with his words, but John Wooden, when he's really describing doing the best you can, he's really saying doing the best you can, not being the best you can. So there is that difference, and I want to give him credit in, in that regard because that is really what's important. It's doing the best you can, not, not so important. Being the best you can, that is important. And that, you don't have to judge yourself against something. Doing, sometimes you have to judge yourself. You can't help it. You judge yourself against your peers, other people in your profession, those that have been more successful, those that have what you think are happier, those that you think have peace of mind but really don't. So it's important to, to really have a sense of humor about it. Know that you can laugh at it all. Also another important thing besides a sense of humor is a sense of calmness. Now, that's a real easy thing for me to say, but that personally is a hard thing for me to do. The sense of humor comes relatively natural to me, but the sense of calmness, holy mackerel. I mean, I, I went to the dentist yesterday, literally yesterday, and you know, I said to him, my gosh, I wake up and my teeth are just clenched like this. I'm telling you, Doc, what's my problem? And he said, let me take your pulse. And he took my pulse and I said, what does taking my pulse have to do with it? He said, well, if you're alive, that means you grind and clench your teeth. So <laughs> what he was saying is we basically all do this whether we realize it or not. He said, every human being when they're sleeping are either clenching or grinding a little bit their teeth. I guess that's when we are allowed to let out our tensions, our stresses, because we're in no longer control. We're in that semi-state of consciousness, and it's the only relief we really get. He then said, do I want a bite guard? And I said, nah, I'm not ready for that yet. I, I don't think I can go to sleep with something in my mouth. I don't know why. It just feels like I'll swallow it or something. I'm very afraid of that. So, uh, but again, we were laughing about this. And, and he, by the way, he is a great dentist. Feel free if you live in the uh, Los Angeles area to email me and I'll, I'll be happy to turn you on to him. But um, the truth is, if we're alive, we are not feeling any sense of peace of mind. Our minds are just not designed that way. They're going to keep circling, circling, circling. And by the way, they don't always necessarily have to be even negative thoughts. 
positive thoughts, this is kind of tricky. It just, just came to me, in fact, right now. If you're, if you're cycling negative thoughts, that we know is no good. That's when if you can do some sort of meditation or mindfulness to get out of that. But what happens if you are cycling positive thoughts? You're still not having peace of mind, but are you not having a sense of enjoyment? I'm just thinking about that now. Uh, I really do. When I'm cycling positive thoughts, I'm not resting. I'm, I'm active in my mind, but there is a different feeling. The problem is what dominates. Is it the negative thoughts or the positive thoughts? And I, I always do this. I like to, to show people this when I think about it. I say, you know, if I can just change that gap, if I can just say, listen, forget the peace of mind for a moment, but just cycle the positive thoughts this much and the negative thoughts this much, and I'm telling you, you'll have enough peace in your life. You won't have to go to the highest mountain in India to find it. But again, that's easier said than done. And why is that, by the way? I've been using this expression now for gosh knows how many times, but it's, I guess it's a pet peeve of mine. It seems to me if it's easy, it should be plain and simply easy. I don't know why it has to be simple to say and not easy to pull off. Very annoying quality of human beings. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. We all have it. I, I'm, I'll be darned. I, I want to do everything I can to figure out how to stop being human sometimes, <laughs> but we, I guess we're stuck with the lot in our life. And I think that's why we love pets so much. It's because we look at them and say, oh gosh, if all I had to do was eat and sleep, what a happy man I'd be. No joke, I'm serious. As much as I love doing all of this, if I could just sleep, I don't even have to eat that much. As you can see, I already do eat enough, but uh, I just could use that sleep. But uh, peace of mind, I think we have to let it go, folks. I think we have to let it stop burdening us. Stop thinking that we have to be perfect. Stop thinking that we even have to do the best that we can do. But again, the journey. Ah, the journey. I can bring up the journey in every single time I talk with you because that truly is the key. It is the journey. That's all that matters. It's not the success. It's not being the best you can. It's not peace of mind. It's the journey towards it. And one of the keys that I want you to remember is that your history is not your destiny. That's what's most important. What is in the past does not mean it has to take place in the future. And I want to also hear your thoughts about that. It's the best way that we can delve deeper into the phenomenon known of peace of mind. So you could always check out my website at barrykibrick.com or if it's something very personal you want to discuss with me, write me at barry at barrykibrick.com. I promise I will answer all emails. These episodes are also available on podcasts as well as with transcripts. So if you do want to read about it, please feel free. You can find it all at barrykibrick.com. Till we meet again, I am Barry Kibrick. And remember this. Sadness and darkness are going to happen. No one can eliminate them from their lives. And sometimes you just need to go there, but you don't need to stay there. Till next time. To become part of the Between the Lines family, go to barrykibrick.com. There you can join our book club, participate in Q&As, catch past episodes, Listen to Barry's podcasts, read his blog, and experience exclusive online features, all at barrykibrick.com. Between the Lines with Barry Kibrick is made possible in part by Patreon. 
Patreon helps creators build and run membership businesses. From podcasters to writers, musicians, artists, and more. With tools that allow their fans to become patrons. More information is available at patreon.com. And Between the Lines with Barry Kibrick is also made possible by the following contributors. A complete list of funders is available at barrykibrick.com. Ah, forgiveness, the ultimate goal to happiness. Or so that's what they say. But what they rarely mention is how important it is to forgive ourselves and how hard that really is. On the next episode of Between the Lines, we'll see if we can come up with some insights on how we can make it easier to find an inner forgiveness.